Hey guys, back here again to give you another New Japan pay-per-view review. Um, as most of you know, if you've seen the review I did of the Dominion pay-per-view, which was in June, I absolutely loved that show. To me, that is one that is show of the year qualities. To me, that is one of the best wrestling shows you're going to see this year. And I am kind of disappointed that more people haven't talked about it, but what are you going to do? Um, but I wanted to review this show to kind of give my thoughts on how the pay-per-view quality follow-up was. Um, to the Dominion show with this show, um, New Japan Soul 2010. You know, also doing this review video will help me rectify the pronunciation, the pronunciation debacle that I had in the Dominion video. By being corrected, I learn things, so I do thank everyone who pointed out to me that it was um, quite dreadful and embarrassing what I was trying to come, bring across, so this will probably be better. I, mean, I expect I'll still butcher a few names here and there, but um, I'll be better this time, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, it's also a good idea, in my mind, to keep New Japan relevant in your thoughts as we head into the G1 Climax tournament starting next week. That should be fun. There's a lot of good stuff there. Um, this show was, I believe, the climax of a tour um, that started um, towards the early part of this month, and this was like the end of that tour, a show that aired on pay-per-view, and overall it was a very fun show, I thought. There was a lot of um, good stuff, and there was some great stuff. Um, hidden among it, um, definitely did, didn't expect this to be as good as Dominion. That's one of that's a um, that's a very rare thing to get a show that was that good. But um, this was a fun show. I thought this was a um, overall very fun show, very easy to sit through for the most part, and I really didn't I really did enjoy it um, overall. So let's get started. We opened up with a tag team match: um, Tai Chi and Tamatonga against Akira and Kaiusuke Mik Mikami. Um, this was a decent opener, I thought. Um, acceptable for an opener. There was some decent action. It was, you know, fast-paced, had a good variety of moves. Um, no real problems with it there. You know, it's just a solid tag team match. Um, two and a half stars. Not really a lot to say about it, but um, it was fine for what it was. I thought it was um, fun for the time that it went. So, let's move on quickly. Um, we came to a singles match. Um, Kushida against Gato. Um, I thought this was somewhat dull, to be honest. Because they built this up with a video package beforehand that kind of, you know, that means that this was, connect if not a feud on its, own, on its own, at least connected to a bigger feud and should have a, some um, emotional investment into it. But they really didn't seem to have to give you any emotional expressions that would suge suggest this, this was beyond any other match. Just felt like they were going through the motions. They didn't play to the crowd either. It just ca came off very flat and, you know, not what it should have been given the fact that they actually built it up a little bit. Um, it was still okay, though. It was still um, solid, I thought. Two and a quarter stars were definitely, I, th I think, the weakest thing on this show. Just, I, 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 I did enjoy it, but um, I, I didn't, it, it didn't deliver on what it should have done, um, I thought. Um, then we came to a six-man tag. Um, Manabu Nakanishi, Hiroki Goto, and King Fail against Riki Koshu, Super Strong Machine, and Mitsuhai Hirazawa. This was a good six-man tag match. The crowd were a lot more into this than they were the previous two matches. Probably because, probably because um, Koshu is in there, and he's the legend that he is in Japan, so they actually were into it. But they were into the whole match, I thought. Um, they actually did play to the crowd a lot more, most of the guys that were in there, whenever they were in there. They did play to the crowd, which was nice to see. And there was some good stuff from some of the guys in there. You know, Godo, when he was in there, he probably had the best um, showing of this match. Um, but it was an all-around fun match. I would say three stars. Um, I did enjoy it for what it was. I would say good, solid six-man tag match. Then we come to Koji Kanemoto and El Samurai defending the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Titles against Prince Devitt and Ryusuke Taguchi. This was a good solid tag team match, but it was a little underwhelming if I do say so myself. Um, you know, El Samurai's in there, and El Samurai at this point in his career is a bit limited in what he can do. You can definitely tell that he was the weakest guy in this match. And, you know, but even with, you know, even with the other guys um, in here, some of the spots seem kind of repetitious. Um, it kind of seemed like they were doing the same um, st stuff um, repeatedly um, to an extent, to an extent, and it really didn't come off like I thought. Like I thought, I thought with the guys in here, it could have been a bit better, um, but it was still good. It was still a solid tag too much. I say three and a quarter stars. Just I, I thought it would be a little better. That's all I'm going to say. Um, you know, giving. Um, Devitt and Taguchi won, and to me, giving Devitt two t two belts is kind of a sign of confidence in the guy. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how long the tag title reign will last, but because I do want him to have a long reign as the junior heavyweight um, singles champion, but I, I do enjoy that they're giving him two belts for now because I do really um, like Devitt a lot. You know, some home country pride and all that. So there you go, three and a quarter stars. I did, I did enjoy the tag match. Just thought it 
it under delivered just slightly, just slightly. Um, and let's move on to Toru Yano versus Tajiri. This was pretty much um, set up whenever Yano and Tanahashi had their hair versus hair match at Dominion, and Yano tried to back out of getting his head shaved, and Tajiri was the one who pretty much um, sealed his fate, so to speak. Um, kind of a shame. To be fair, that well, to be honest, that Tajiri went into this um, leg legitimately injured um, right knee, um, banged up, could not really do a lot in this match, and they kind of um, played up that fact um, to execute this. But it was well executed what they did. Um, it, it pretty much became a battle of who could injure whose knee the fastest, and Tajiri did compensate well for the fact that he couldn't really do a lot in this match. I actually think that if they had followed through with what they were doing, they could have actually gone longer and made it a good match, but I guess they didn't really want to da um, risk further damage to Tajiri's knee, when you could just let it heal up and then have these guys have a real match in the future. So I thought, I'm giving it, I'm giving it a lot of credit because it did actually it was well executed, and I think, I think it was actually fun for the time that it went. Uh, and it might, be, it might be sort of a feud, so I think, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not a, it doesn't hurt to actually watch this. So I did enjoy it for the time that it went, you know, two and three quarters, I'll give it, I'll give it that for being a well-executed, almost a segment, I would say, um, on the show. So, there you go. Um, not, not not bad stuff there at all. Um, we get to the IWGP Tag Team Championship match. This was a rematch from um, the Dominion show with the, sh the same three teams, but with different rules. Um, the Dominion match was pretty much three teams um, in the ring at once, and then you have elimination style until we have a winner. This one, there was no more than two teams in the ring at once, and pretty much um, things switch around with every pinfall, and uh, and it keeps going, keeps going until we have one team with two pinfalls in sequence, and that team is the winners. And there was a lot of good action in this. Um, there was some dull portions as well because this was a long match; it went over thirty minutes, and. It did go very long, and I'm not going to say that it was the easiest thing in the world to sit through, but there was some, there was a lot of enjoyable action in portions, enough to where you could say that this was a good, solid match, um, and I would give it three and a half stars for that. You know, Ber Bernard, um, the former A train, still impresses in parts with what he can do in the ring. You know, even at the start of the match, he came out with a kind of a flip um, pinning uh, maneuver that was like wow he can do this you know that was kind of impressive and you know those it it didn't um get into a it didn't try to be more than it could be because of this or oh, the match this long it's not going to be um good action in all portions but they kind of spread the action the good parts of the match out enough to where you could watch it until the end and don't and not feel like you just were exhausted by what you were watching like you could go straight to the next match after this was over which i appreciated so you know it was like, it wasn't as good as the dominion match i don't think i think the dominion match was a, a very very good match this was still a, um, a very very good match i would say still very good but um, not quite as good um still three and a half stars i thought it was a very good um tag team match you know the the the, the stipulation might not have been the best because I don't think you could do too many of these. But um, it was it was kind of different. I, I think they had they've had a lot of the three way tag title matches where it's pretty much elimination style. I think they have that, had that this year. I'm not haven't seen all of them, but um, it was still a very solid um, tag team match. Three and a half stars. Let's move on to the great stuff. Um, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Takashi Ikizuka. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, the crowd came alive for this one, to put it lightly, because up until right now, probably the most frustrating thing about this show was not the matches, because the, there was nothing bad so far, but the crowd were not alive for a lot of what was going on, and that was kind of frustrating, because there are things that you would you want to get excited about that you can't, because the crowd aren't getting excited for it either, and you just kind of try to start to get excited and then kind of feel fall flat when the crowd isn't cooperating with you. Uh, but the crowd came alive for this one. The atmosphere made this a, made this a great, great match. I will say that. You know, Tanahashi is a very well loved guy. Um, those, are, you know, the action here, um, it was it was solid. Like it was solid, but it wasn't spectacular. But the fact that the, there was just a great crowd atmosphere for this match, I thought, and the, it made the match seem a lot better than it was. And I would say that's a credit to the match that it was able to, you know, bring the crowd alive. And I thought this was a great match overall. You know, the end. You know, it was pretty much. Um, Deep sleep until you lose, or deep sleep you lose. I'm not sure. Basically, the stipulation was that um, the loser would have to lose the uh, um, you know chokes, um, sleeper holds, just kind of be knocked be knocked out, I guess. And that was kind of 
putting the odds against Tanahashi because Ikazuka is the master of the sleeper hold. Um, but it was a very, I thought it was a great match overall. Just the, the crowd atmosphere made this match great. Um, the ending was not as spontaneous as they would have liked because the match was kind of going that way where you want um, Tanahashi to, to make a comeback and have a kind of spontaneous ending. But that's a hard thing to pull off with the stipulation that they had. Um, it was still, it was still, I would still say a match of the night. It was a great match, I thought. I'm sure people won't agree with that. I think that if you, like after watching this review, if you, if you just want to watch the great matches on here, I don't think you'll appreciate this as much as I did because I had just been through a kind of a frustration with the crowd and then this match came and kind of brought the crowd to life and I really just appreciate the match ever more because of that. Um, so overall a great match, four stars, um, definitely the match of the night in my opinion. Um, just great, great stuff I thought. Um, then we come to the IWGP Heavyweight Championship match. Toki Makabe defending against Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, I like both guys. I like both guys. I like both of their. Uh, I like their natural charisma that they project. You know, Makabe isn't. I'm not. I'm not saying he's the best wrestler because you know, um, he's not. He's very limited in what he can do, but he works very well within his limits. I think, and um, he can definitely deliver a great match with the kind of atmosphere he projects and the kind of reaction he gets from the crowd. I think because that's what made the Shizaki match great, in my opinion. That he, the crowd were just really, really into it. And just really um, behind Maccabi. And he can make a great face comeback as well. You know, his, he doesn't come off kind of like as the kind of exasperating Superman that people accuse John Cena of being, for example. You know, he, when he's getting ready to make a comeback, he'll sell the move that he's being hit with. But then he'll just kind of get this really serious expression on his face. And it kind of makes you think that, oh, guy, this, this guy is strong, but he's not coming off as too strong in that kind of way. I think he's striking the perfect balance. And I do appreciate that about him. And Nakamura, in my opinion, you know, he... He has a very, kind of a dark presence about him, you know, he's he just kind of like, he doesn't um, have a lot of facial expressions and he kind of just like looks at you kind of in a, in a cold, dark stare and I think, I think I, I like the way that he comes off as that kind of a very easy guy to not like, um, I think. I mean, he kind of reminds me of Kawada in terms of, terms of, you know, charisma and presence, not in wrestling ability, they're two very different entities, but overall, um... There's no reason why two guys that kind of project that kind of charisma should not have had an electric atmosphere to go with this match. And there was not an electric atmosphere for this match. Not like Makabe Shiyazaki, um, which made that match great in my opinion. I understand that that match was an interpromotional match and this one um, was not. And the, kind of the, that match, the Shiyazaki match, feels more important maybe. But this was still a rematch from the match that they had where Makabe won the title originally at the, um, the May pay-per-view that I can't remember the name of. Um, the crowd were definitely into it, don't get me wrong, they were definitely into it, it's not fair to say that they weren't, but not as much as they could have been, um, to make this a great match, because it was just a very good match, it was very good, don't get me wrong, um, Nakamura was just coming out with some stiff knees, and Rikabe was selling them, selling them, um, like a pro, um, but I, 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 I wish this could have been great, and I think that the, if they put this exact match in front of a better crowd, um, this could have been a great match, it was still a very good match, I think, and, um, it, it didn't. It, didn't, it also didn't have, I, I think, a lot of the drama of the Shiazaki match in the in the fact that you were really kept guessing in that match as to who was going to win. And in this match, there was some moments like that, but not really as much. So I wouldn't say a great match. I would say a very good match. Three and three quarter stars overall. Makabe um, retains the title in the end. And overall, I'd say this was 7.75. Not a great show, but a very fun show. Very good show. Um, there's some worthwhile stuff to check out, but like I said... Um, the crowd would make you appreciate the Tanahashi and Ikazuka match um, much more if you had been kind of through what they had been kind of suffering. The kind of the, this this show suffered from the crowd, I think. Overall, I, I just I'm not kind of trying to be overly harsh on them because they did come alive at certain points, but not as really as much. They weren't into it the whole night, is what I'm kind of trying to um, project. Um, but overall, yeah, I'd say there's some worthwhile stuff to check out on this show. Uh, I might not come back. And I might. Talk a bit about the G1 climax um, when it starts, and I definitely will be talking about um, Chikara once I get Chikara Swords Rex to watch. I won't, be, I won't be doing a review, I don't think. I think I will just be doing a general thoughts on the current product and where it's going because we have look, Young Lions Cup coming up. That's a big deal. So that'll be on Monday when I get the actual DVD and I actually watch it. Um, but I'm out for this. I'm out for now. Um, later. <laughs>